Hello folks and welcome back to another lesson in this one. We're going to be looking at Red Hot Chili Peppers, Righteous and the Wicked. <sighs> this is a good one. There's about three or four big riffs in it, I guess, um, and a kind of solo part. So we're going to look at all of that stuff and I'll go through all of the parts before I teach you them. So let's just dive straight into it, shall we? Now we're in standard tuning and the rhythm sound I'm going for neck pickup. that part and also the um but it's not completely clean right there's a bit of there's a bit of bite to it right so I've got my archer doing that for me with my with my amp and then I leave my archer on and then I go to the bridge pickup he just uses a cheap boss pedal I think it's the DS1 or something or OD1 and um, so I don't have one of those so I'm gonna probably get one but I'm gonna go for this tone for the chorus so the verse riff goes like this two three four one two three Then at this part, when you play the, you're going to go to the distorted part of the chorus. It's part of it, right? So it's. Now that's difficult to do because there's an overdub where I think it goes to the bridge pickup, which you're not going to be able to do, right? But more on that in a second, right? Let's go back to our neck pickup. So the first chord voicing. Super funky. It's ninth fret on the D. G string is muted by finger number one, and then I'm using my third and fourth finger for the tenth fret on the B and E. So you should hear that when you play those top four strings. Make sure that one's not sounding out, or it'll sound pretty horrid. Now, to be able to play it smoothly like that, you're also going to need to mute the A string with your, um, and possibly the E string as well, depending on how much strum you want to put into it, with um, lightly using your second finger. So get that nice and clean first. Then you're going to play this. And that is just a downstroke whack. And again, I'm muting all the strings there. Then you're going to play with the upstroke, the seventh fret on the D, and that's got a rest straight after it, and then the ninth fret with another rest. So it's those are two upstrokes, right? So it's downstroke with the for the whack, upstroke for the seven, upstroke for the nine. And then you've got another downstroke whack at the end so it's very slowly that first part is two three four again a bit slower two three four okay and then to speed and again So once you've nailed that, the second bar is the same as before, but then you've got this. You've got an E sus4 to an E major. Okay. If you're just playing uh, that chord voicing, so 9107 to 997. I'm using my little finger to move basically from the 10th fret to the 9th. And again, it's downstroke for the whack, upstroke, downstroke for the E major. All right, so both those parts together. Okay. 
again. That's that. Then there's um, a rest for six beats and then you come back in with that second part. But this time there's two whacks after it, so it's again. All right, straightforward enough. Um, then you play that whole thing around again, but right at the very end when you come to the, you then go to a double stop on the seventh fret, right? This is basically the seventh fret on the G and the B string. But you've got to be on the bridge pickup and you've got to engage a distortion, which is super difficult when you're basically you've got no time at all to change, right? It's based on the album, I think it's an overdub. I'm not too sure what John does live. If you want to play this along live, what I would do is play. I would change there, right? So on the clean tone, you'll play. Turn the distortion on. And in that break, when you hit the ninth fret, use that that time to flick onto the bridge pickup, right? That's what I would do. So the chorus riff goes like this. Two, three, four. riff. So you're basically repeating around the same pattern twice just with a slightly different um, phrasing at the end of it but the, the pattern does start on the four and so it's one and two and three and four. Okay so that's an upstroke on the um, double stop seventh fret on the G and B. Then you play the ninth fret on the next string down. So you play that three times. Then you play seven, nine. Then you've got this little chord, which is 10, nine, 11. One, two, three. So down, up, up. Background. At this point, it varies slightly because you're going to put in a, I'm not sure if it's a, um, it's quite a lazy sort of, it's like a sort of lazy trill, really. I'm not even sure if it's a triplet or not, but essentially you play the um, upstroke on the seventh fret and then you do a hammer on and a pull off from the ninth fret. All right, just so it's in time. With and you've got another variation there just with the rhythm, but the part's the same, so again, slowly. And then you go around again, right? And then the last time you're just going to play. And then there's an extra rest at the end. Then clean tone again, neck pickup. And we're going to go for this, which is lush. That is the riff. Um, it's actually quite tricky though because the phrasing does change even though it's just four chords and the four chords are two um, shapes right. So the first one is the seventh fret, one finger chord right um, on the G, B and E string. Then you go to this seven, six, seven. So second finger, first finger, third finger and that um, shape moves down to the fourth fret then up to the sixth. So those, those are the chords. That's not too tricky, but the rhythm is because he goes early to the um, second and third chords the first time round, and the second time round, every second time round this is, he plays them on the beat. So on the beat it's simple because you're just going to play Two, three, four. The first 
this time though he plays this. Is she going to play six? Then a whack, then change. So it's starting with an upstroke. So you've got. But you do play eight of them, so it's. Then you move down to the fourth fret. And you play nine of them that time, and then you move up and play four. And then a rest for one beat. So there's a lot going on, even though it sounds quite, um, quite simple. That's that. All right. So you're just going to need to practice that. Second time round, though, is a bit more simple because he actually plays. So he lets the last chord of each phrase ring out. to it just so eight on the fourth fret five here and the fifth one rings out play that round again and for the last bar you just substitute out this now solo time this is cool basically a repeating phrase of two bars of four four one bar of two four and it goes like this <laughs> So pretty straightforward, you're playing the same pattern twice. That's once, then again. All right, so you just gotta learn one part. And within this are other repeating patterns. So you're gonna play this twice. So naught one, naught two. Yeah, on the D and A. Then you're going to play this. That's the third part of this um, this first phrase, right? So that slowly is zero one zero two zero. And the first part of that phrase is always a hammer on and a pull off. Then you've got on the low string two one two and then the open A. Then you play it round again. Then you're just moving that pattern around the neck, right? The next one I think goes up to the seventh fret on the B. So that one slowly. These are all the same, so I won't spend too long on these. Start with your first finger on the seventh fret. So you're just using the first and second fingers there. Then you've got this. Nine seven nine seven. But um, you want to use your, the tip of your finger for that note and then flatten it to get to the next time round. Okay, so again. So you might need to do a little bit of just adjusting where your finger is, right, for that um, transition. And there again, I'm on back onto the tip of my finger at that point, right? So flattened it for the first part. And then I shift my finger so I'm on the tip of my first finger again. Bit of a key change and then we're on the second fret of the D string. And that's straight and forward enough again, right? Um, the only, you're only using the first three fingers there and they play pretty much where they should play on the, uh, you know, on their assigned frets if you like, right? Um, then you're going to go back to the first one. And then... 
to end, right? So that's just a uh, 16th fret bend on the G while you're still holding down the 17th fret. And that's it. And then the ending just extends part of the chorus. So to end. So there you have it. Now seeing that this is 30 years old this year, we're going to nail this whole album over the coming months. So strap in. It should be a fun ride. Hope you well. See you later. Bye.